Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, where we talk to all the talented people in the Brony community as and when they can actually be bothered to speak to me. Uh, yeah, because I'm not pony famous particularly. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's move away from that, shall we? Because we do actually have someone here. We do have a very lovely guest, someone who has very, very nice hair. In fact, I mean, I could write a movie about how great that hair is, but chances are he'll be critiquing it one way or another. It's James Cork, uh, also known as Movie Slate. James, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. And by the way, you don't need to be pony famous to be a key cast podcaster, okay? You you don't need that, man. You you can key cast on your own. Oh, I know. I, 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 what can I say? I'm, I'm speechless. That's mainly because I don't have a script. Help, please, someone write one. James, do you have one? Give me one. Give me Labyrinth. <laughs> uh, are you sure? You will not be able to handle all the bulge that it comes with. Oh, listen, like, I can impersonate David Bowie. That'll be a piece of cake. No, you can't. No, oh. no, you cannot. Nobody can impersonate David Bowie. He's oh, unique. So... He's unique, but, oh, come on. Like, who couldn't do a David Bowie impersonation? Nobody better than David Bowie himself. Only David Bowie can impersonate David Bowie. Isn't that what he was doing in Labyrinth anyway? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, I will direct you to my lawyer now. I will not keep talking on the podcast. Uh, it's fun. I know, I know. Well, I tell you what, we were talking a bit about movies there. We have to talk a little bit about Movie Slate. So, um, for those that don't know, uh, Movie Slate is James's what one of your projects actually i believe um this is where you review various movies i believe with with artwork i dare say uh can you give us a bit of info about that just something to whet the appetite um well i have been, always been a fan of movies i'm a movie buff i love movie stuff uh, like i watch all the making ofs i have a bunch of movie books and I follow a lot of movie blogs so I've, and a lot of movie critics on the internet, like the Nostalgia Critic, Film Brain, The Cinema Snob. And I said, mm, you know what? I should create a movie pony. Nobody has done a movie pony before, right? And there has been a couple, but nobody had done movies late, uh, a pony like movies late before. Like, you know, that is uh, Celluloid Mane and Tail. And I said, this is like a no-brainer to me. It, it was like, this is such a simple idea. It, nobody has done it. So I browsed, Googled it a bit, nobody had done it, and I was like, hmm, well, I'll do it. And the rest is history. It, it yeah. was as simple as that. I, I thought, there should be a movie pony that reviews movies, and her mane should be made out of celluloid. Oh, why um, not? I mean, yeah. My Little Pony, you know, I mean, it's uh, they've got all sorts of cast in the show, you know. I mean, remember the, um, the three kids, you know, they worked as journalists at one point. Who says that the pony world can't have their own fandoms inside that as well? <laughs> and by the way, because uh, you do the artwork as well for your uh, for your own entries. Yeah, uh, those usually take um, uh, take a lot or not a lot, not, not a lot at all, depending on how di- how complicated the idea is. Like um, I am known for recycling the same background over and over again, which is the inside of Movie Slate's projection booth. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I am. Oh my gosh, I'm watching one of my friends, Blind Coyote Chino, do an art stream, and he just did a, a little doodle of Movie Slate, looking angry, watching a movie, and I cannot believe it. <laughs> the question is, though, what movie? What movie is it that's getting on your goat? Uh, oof, um, I don't know. Oh, but, but by the way, that is one misconception that people usually do, uh, that I am not Movie Slate. Uh, movie slate is not my mouthpiece. Her opinion doesn't doesn't fit my opinion. Um, uh, this has happened recently. Like I reviewed the Star Wars the Star Wars movies, the six of them, uh, not long ago, and I had a lot of people coming at me saying that I was trashing on the prequels, and that I was being needlessly mean. Apparently, there is a, a part of the audience of the Star Wars fandom that really likes the the prequels, uh, and that made me really happy because I appreciate the prequels as well. Um, I don't trash on them, but to me it makes sense that movies late wouldn't be very happy with what they were doing with the with episodes one, two, and three. So I made her a Star Wars purist because it made sense in in the writing. I mean, she prefers practical effects over uh, overuse of CGI and green screen. So 
That's how I wrote the character. But I had a lot of people angry at me, coming at me, saying, how dare you trash on episode one? That is my favorite Star Wars movie. Who the hell do you think you are? And I'm like, yeah, calm down, calm down. I actually had to release an announcement, uh, like a post explaining, movies late is not me. I don't share her opinion. Like... She doesn't speak for me. She is just her own. She, I think we only, we only agreed on one movie, and that is Aliens. Aliens is her favorite movie of all time, and so it's mine. But besides that, we pretty much have 100% absolutely discerning opinions. But you know what? We have a few things we have to cover apart from films. If I were to stay on this the whole time, this wouldn't be Midnight Scribes creative vibes. It would be Midnight Scribes movie vibes, and that isn't the same show. But... Uh, well, I mean, we've talked a little bit about your art. We've talked a little bit about, well, a fair bit about movies. Uh, um, you've got quite a strong presence on Tumblr. Uh, we know you've got two blogs there. Or what's the correct term for Tumblr? Is it just Tumblr? Do you call them Tumblr? Uh, I'm not yeah, down with you, the lingo. You can, you can call it Tumblr. You can call it blogs. Uh, when it comes from... Uh... When it goes from blogs to tumblers, it's pretty much the same thing. People, you can call it website. You can say, oh, I have my website at blah, 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 tumblr.com. I'm pretty sure that is also a real tumblr. But, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> you, you can call it tumblers. You can call it blogs. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, the, the, the whole lingo with tumblr and all that is, uh, and the whole stigma that follows tumblr is, um, that is a bit of a poisoned atmosphere to work on. But that depends on how you manage your dashboard. I mean, the people that I follow on Tumblr, I have no problem with whatever they reblog. And I, I, I don't see when people complain about Tumblr saying, oh, don't go there, it's horrible. And I'm like, well, that depends on the area of Tumblr that you are navigating. Have you seen the, what, the darkest side of DeviantArt? Or the darkest side of Full Affinity? Or, or the darkest side of the Internet Movie Database? Every website has a dark side. That's the reason I'm called Midnight Scribe and not Daylight Scribe. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> but yeah, and I'm, I'm aware that the sites have a dark side. I mean, in terms of your art and your Tumblr, the writing you do and so on, is it relatively light? I mean, because obviously we're all here because we're fans of My Little Pony. Uh, is, in terms of movie slate and, and in terms of the other uh, comics you do and artwork and so on, how in keeping is it, do you reckon, in terms of with the original show in terms of the feel of it. What I mean is, obviously, like, you've got Movie Slate and you've got your, your Aver Tumblr and you do various artwork. You, you've got a lot of projects. You do the MBS show as well and so on. And obviously, the Brony community is quite well known for being quite a vibrant, upbeat, quite, you know, a positive community. And uh, you've you've briefly touched on the fact that there are darker elements on this sort of Tumblr sites in, in the way which we know of and we do not talk about, you know, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, and, we're, not uh, going to, we're not going to talk about that one. Um, you, you're asking me what I what what feel do I get out of the community? Yeah, well, and, and how do you fit in, do you feel? I think the Brony community hasn't changed a bit since the beginning in 2010. I think it's one of the most stable, one of the most constant communities in the in the surface of the of the internet. Like, there, there's communities that are, you know, Infamous for being insufferable or, or nitpicky, like Sonic fanbase comes to mind. Where I am lucky, all of my friends that are in the Sonic fandom, they are wonderful people. But it's a ratio of for every nice person there is there is ten people that that, that can, you, they cannot even live with themselves. They are difficult to deal with. But when it comes to the Brony fandom, it is a case of the opposite. Although, uh, it, like okay, before I go into the the negative side. <laughs> I love how a bit optimistic and kind of like open-minded this fandom is, because I mean I think it comes with the territory. I mean, we, we like a show that was originally addressed to little five-year-old girls to make them buy plastic horses, and if it wasn't for a show that treated all the audience equal, and I don't mean just boys and girls, but also grown-ups, uh, middle-aged people, teenagers, uh, young adults, uh, elderly, every, every single person that could be on the surface of the planet uh, has the chance to enjoy this show because it's made so accessible. So because of that, the fandom is also uh, very accessible. I mean, I, I can see why some people will be intimidated when it comes to joining the fandom, and that comes with the negativity. This is one case of, for every 99 people that are fantastic in the fandom, there is one that is impossible to deal with. And this loud minority is the problem with the with the fandom. 
And I'm talking about people that are problematic, difficult to deal with, that they want to be right about everything, or that they, uh, you know, Twilight Sparkle shouldn't be a princess. She should be shipping <laughs> with my OC. They are not, they are using too much Princess Luna. They are pondering at us. Yeah. The Cutie Mark Crusaders didn't got their cutie marks. Megan McCarthy is full of lies. Season 3 should have been 26 episodes long. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Relax. Lauren... James, relax, relax, relax. Calm down, calm down. When I channel You're becoming one of them. When I, cha- when I channel what these obnoxiously cynical people say is just... It, it it gets to me. I cannot help it. It's just, you know. Yeah. Well, I think you're right there. I mean, there's no place for cynicism in the community. And I think you're right. The community that we have is an incredibly good one. It's vibrant. I mean, um, and, you know, we are all linked from a show that isn't necessarily aimed towards us, but it has moved. It's taken a life in its own and it's allowed people like yourself, myself, Sugar Dove, who's also part of the Highland Bronies, uh, which the show will be going out on on our YouTube channel. We you know we're all linked up through our love of the show and of the community and of the people who are involved in it. I mean, you know, because obviously I heard about yourself long before I ever spoke to you through Sugar Dove, who um, informed me of your art, of your uh, movie blog, uh, Tumblr, uh, you know, just that we have all come together so well to actually unite over our love, not just of the show and of what's come of that, but actually just of the community itself and the community has become something far larger than anyone could have anticipated and certainly a lot better than I think people could have ever anticipated. And it's such a beautiful thing. I mean, we've got to enjoy it, I suppose. Uh, that's that's definitely the, the, the thing, the, the, the expression, the right never ends. Um, one of the things that people are most afraid of is how when, when the fandom will end, when the fandom will stop happen. And if people forget that the Firefly fandom is still going, and they only have 13 episodes to work with. We have over 100. We're going to have over 100, and a movie. I think this fandom is going to have fun with itself for a long time. Besides, when people are so ingrained inside the fandom mentality, it is difficult to walk out of it. You know how some people say, no, I'm leaving the fandom, and I'm out. And then three weeks later, they are back again. Oh, yeah. No, it is kind of like, you know, a little bit of catnip. Before you know it, they are hooked in line and sinker. And before you know it, that's it. They'll just never escape. I mean, I just like the idea, like, 50 years from now, we're all old people in some retirement home, like, by the sea. And, like, you know, someone's coming up to offer us a drink of water. And, and, like, we'll be sitting there in wicker chairs going, oh, I remember those days when I was just a young boy. I remember the show called My Little Pony. <laughs> let me tell you, it was just such a beautiful show. It united us all together before the Third World War destroyed our nations and united <laughs> us all under tyranny of insert country here. Hey, Kyle, do you have your holographic projector? We can put an episode now if you want. Oh, I need to dig out my laser disc player. How, how, never... about, how about episode 5 of season 34? That was a fun season. Oh, yes, the one which had our fave pony in it. Oh, James, could you tell me what is your favorite pony in My Little Pony? Friendship <laughs> is magic. I apologize. <laughs> I, I went from senile to kind of cheap Elvis in person here. You, started, you didn't sound more like cheap Elvis, but more like drunken. Uh, more like r- drunken Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I've got nothing to say to that. Uh, my favorite pony is uh, Rarity, of course. Uh, for any particular reason? Like, uh, I don't want to make it that easy for you to just say. Well, you know, I have always been divided between Applejack and Rarity. Uh, like, Applejack was the one that made the very first uh, first impression, the very best first impression ever. Uh, she just appeared on the screen being cool and being awesome and then Rarity followed suit and it's like oh, girly girl oh, what a thing but like when Applejack was kind of like um, uh, a quote unquote love at first sight with Rarity I ended up warming up to her so because I was presented with her flaws first you know self-centered girly incredibly fashion focused that she, she seems to have no other interest out there and then we were given her virtues that she's generous, she's caring, she's always looking after the, the rest. She is dedicated and 
So for like, I was like, she's a more balanced character than Applejack is. I I, I like Applejack for how simplistic she is, and that sounds like that can sound like an insult, I know, but sometimes you can enjoy simplicity. Well, definitely. I, I think mean, I think I, I think I like Rarity because she's more complex. Like when it comes, I think it depends on the day. If I am on a day where I am like that, I don't even want to see anybody. I think I will say Applejack is my favorite. But when it comes to regular basis, I like Fashion Horse. I like Fashion Horse a lot. Well, why not? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I know a lot of people that are big fans of Rarity. I mean, including yourself. And what? And actually, talking a bit about Rarity and talking about yourself, because I think you know there could be a case made that the favorite ponies that we have embody a bit of our own character in it in terms of like it reflects something that, that we think of ourselves or perhaps subconsciously think of ourselves like for example like you know you were saying about how rarity you know is incredibly generous kind thoughtful you know that kind of pony and you, you know i've seen a lot of the same qualities in yourself you have been like in the short time that i known you you have been such a giver in terms of the community in terms of our little section of the community you know you've been not just time, but effort, you know, the friendship you've offered and so on. Like, you, you've imbued part of the My Little Pony spirit in real life. <laughs> like, you're talking about each individual person within the fandom, which is absolutely true. Or are you not trying to describe me? Because I will completely disagree with what you just said. I don't know. It depends on whether you like taking the compliments. <laughs> I suck at taking compliments. Believe me, I suck. I'm not good at taking compliments. We'll get you there. Slowly but surely, we will get you there to the point where you're taking compliments like a pro. You'll have an ego as big as mine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what else to say? I mean, we've talked a bit about your work. We've talked about your favourite pony. we talked about the show. I suppose... So, we know about you being an artist. And we know that you do... Uh, you do the writing for your own uh, particular tumblers and so on. Uh, what about the artwork you do for other people? Because I believe you do commissions. I uh, yes, I do commissions, and actually, right, uh, uh, like just a few hours before uh, before finish before recording this, I just completed a drawing with its four alternate versions. Well, with, with its three alternate versions, and that picture actually was not pony related. All right. Oh, controversial! What was that about? Give us a bit of detail. It's a uh, well, it's a very, it's a, it's a very simple uh, drawing of a wolf, uh, wolf OC. That's a, a furry, furry art, because I come from the furry fandom. I started my my adventure in the world of the internet art on BCL, uh, which is a very old, very clunky, really uncomfortable to use, a uh, furry archive gallery. Where you could up- upload whatever picture you wanted, as long as it wasn't, uh, uh, as long as it was 100% original artwork, that it wasn't fan art of any kind. But yeah, I started on the fur- on the furry fandom, drawing furries, and the reason why I enjoy drawing furries so much, in fact, I will say that I enjoy drawing furries a lot more than I enjoy drawing ponies. Um, controversial opinion, I know. Like ponies are fun, but you don't learn anatomy when drawing ponies. Uh, because ponies are made out of chewgum and marshmallows, and they don't have bones, and they can be squished, twisted, turned around, and bloated, inflated, and deflated, and anything, and you can do whatever they want with you want with them because they are a cartoon. Um, and the way that I draw ponies is very cartoonish. Now, when it comes to furries, it's different, and I enjoy drawing them because it gives me the chance to learn human anatomy how to draw proper muscles, how to draw pro- proper proportions. Now, I'm not the best at it. I can point to you to seven other artists who are way better than me, but I'm getting there. Well, learning don't do that. is something that never stops. Well, listen, I, well, learning never stops, but I tell you what, if you want to learn a bit more, we have to commission you. We've got to actually get a bit more artwork coming from you that we can get, because I need to commission you as well, because I want to see Midnight Scribe done by yourself, preferably oh. watching a movie on Laserdisc. So tell me, James, where can we go in order to get a commission from you? Oh, that's very easy. Just go to my DeviantArt. I work through DeviantArt because it has a great Note 6 system where you can, like, you know, talk privately with, with your client and all that. I have my commission catalog in there. I have my my commission prices and, and all that. Uh, and my DeviantArt is very simple, just jamescork.deviantart.com. That's uh, J-A-M-S-M-E-S-C-O-R-C-K.deviantart.com. 
But yeah, there you go. You can find me there. You can find links to all my other galleries over there as well. Oh, don't worry. We'll pop a link to the video below. So if you want to actually commission James for some very cool pony or non-pony art, you'll be able to get him through there. And I'm pretty sure he'll be very happy to get some commissions coming through there very soon from all five viewers of this video. If there's more than five, it's probably because I've watched it a few extra times just to bump up the view count a wee bit. <laughs> but no, I actually better stop before I actually talk us out of a video because who knows, the ratings might go up or down depending on how this goes. But I'll tell you what, we're going to wrap up the show there just for the moment. Uh, James, thank you so much for coming on. I know this ah, was... No um, problem. You don't need is... to thank me, man. This is awesome. James, thank you so much. You have made my <laughs> night again. And listen, I'm going to be the one that gets the last word in because you're not getting any more. Thank you so much for joining. I'll be looking forward to catching you in private soon, some point after this. <laughs> and that's and that's that for uh, today's show, our very first show. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, fingers crossed, because if you don't, then it won't be a second, and that'll be a real shame, because, uh, well, you don't know who we've got lined up for the second episode. And let me tell you, we've got a real cracker lined up there. So listen, take care, everyone. And uh, the last word from Midnight Scribe is, please subscribe. Please subscribe.